whoa what is going on everybody um today we're going to be opening up the two-player starter kit for star wars unlimited the first expansion is called spark of rebellion and it's got like maybe 200 cards in it um it looks really cool it's a new deck building tcg um from a company called uh ffg something about fantasy flight games which as someone who really only pays attention to magic um i hear not so great things about but i think it's only because they don't keep their games alive long enough don't offer enough support so hopefully things change with star wars unlimited uh it seems like a really cool game to collect for it seems like a really cool game to deck build for there's lots of really unique uh card types um synergies and the frenetic pace of the game itself uh seems really interesting and could be a really awesome and refreshing take on 1v1 card combat um there is there are some rules um for deck building and there is a design for draft um however the multiplayer situation seems a little bit sketchy but some people might be excited about it some people uh might only play like large multiplayer tables for card games um but right now we've got the two player starter kit so this is something that uh released today with the new game and it's basically two decks that are ready to go um we've got on the back here a full deck list here let me we've got full deck lists for both luke skywalker and darth vader and then it also comes with some punch out tokens um probably some i think there's like a cheap play mat in here it might just be like paper um but this is currently the only place to acquire the Darth Vader and the Luke Skywalker leader cards. So a really, really brief rundown of Star Wars Unlimited as a TCG is you have a leader card and a base card. Um, and those kind of give you your color identity and then everything. It works sort of like Lorcana does in terms of depositing cards into your mana pool your resource pool um upside down so you never get land screwed you never have to worry about drawing a land you can always put um a new resource in your resource pool uh, which is really cool i think that a lot of companies and card design teams have started doing that um, especially to differentiate themselves from Magic the Gathering. Uh, I think it's easy to decide whether accurate or not that that is one of the biggest drawbacks, quote-unquote, um, of playing a game like Magic the Gathering. But it'll be a little bit easier to explain things uh, once we open this bad boy up, so I'm trying not to destroy this box too much, but it is a little tricky. Okay, so inside the box we've got. Oh, just loose. Loose that? No, okay, they were tucked away in there. So they're pretty safe. Pretty safe in there. Let me put the garbage to the side. So we've got our two decks here. It looks like they gave us um, some Wizards of the Coast quality uh, paper deck boxes which are going to be completely useless if you sleeve your cards, most likely. Oh, actually, that might fit a sleeve deck. But 
Who knows? These are... I mean, useless is probably a kind term for how they wind up. They always just go in the trash when you open them. Like pre-constructed commander decks, you get them. They're not good. Uh, then we've got some counters. So damage marked on cards is permanent in this game. So we've got a bunch of damage counters, a lot of ones, some fives and some tens. And then we've got X's, which uh, signifies whether or not a card has used their um, special move. There will be special moves on some cards, kind of like Pokemon's um, super moves, where you can only use it once per game. Once you've used it, you have to mark that that card has been exhausted uh, and you will not be able to use that special move again for the rest of the game. Um, these are not bad. They're, they'll probably get a little rough over time, but, um, as far as like cardboard punch outs go, they're, they're not too shabby. I think it would be pretty cool. I think game genic is, I believe I saw someone put a sleeve deck into the boxes. Oh, sick. Okay. So unlike, um, other card games, apparently these deck boxes will fit a fully sleeved deck um i do have <clears throat> yeah cheap but yeah i <laughs> i don't use them for i mean i've got a couple back here these are the ones that come with the like commander decks from wizards and these ones aren't terrible they will fit a sleeved commander deck barely um if you single sleeve only uh, but the ones that notoriously come, we've reviewed a handful of starter decks, um, starter packs, starter kits, starter kits, um, for magic on this channel before. And the deck boxes that come in those are hilariously bad. They do not fit, uh, sleeved decks. They barely fit sleeve sideboards, um, so yeah, I'm already fairly impressed with the level of quality. Even the like booklets and stuff feel like a good, um, you know, when you open a box of Lego and you've just got that quality instruction manual. Although now I think most of their stuff is digital, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you can just tell that someone cared a little bit more than maybe normal. Uh, in putting their product together. I'm just punching these out so I can get rid of the cardboard thing. This thing, this token here, is um, what Magic players would probably refer to as the initiative. I believe it might actually be called the initiative in this game as well. Uh, this signifies who gets to play first, and this is something that can be taken to and from um, players throughout the game. So here we've got quick start rules, and then these are the play mats. Oh, actually, it looks like it looks like the backside is a poster. That's cool. It's like the card art from the thing. So this is the play mat on the backside which has got some quick references on here, which is really good. That's upside down for you. Um, not a terrible uh, play mat as far as like communicating information goes. I think because there's a lot going on in this game at any given time and it's very speedy, um, they've been very diligent in segmenting their play spaces on the boards. Uh, but I do like this round structure setup reference. Uh, that's pretty good. And the poster on the back is not terrible either. Not bad. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I agree. So I'm assuming this one's got Luke on it. It does. 
That's pretty cool. Not a terrible first impression. Um, yo, what's up, Outbreak? Not a terrible first impression from this company as far as their paper playmats go. No, I, I don't know anyone that uses paper playmats. So <clears throat> it's interesting um, to see them put so much care into it. Uh, this is just a quick start guide. I'm not going to go into um, how to play this game necessarily. <coughs> In this video, I kind of just wanted to check out the products. Um, but basically, you've got six colors. They sort of work similar to um, colors of mana in Magic the Gathering, where they have certain themes that play out through the cards. Um, but you can use resources of any style in order to cast cards of those colors. I will go into that in a little bit of detail once we open up one of these decks. Um, so of course I am going to want to play the Darth Vader deck for the most part. Um, big fan. But basically this game works um, similar to Commander in the sense that you have a leader, your commander, for lack of a better term, which can be flipped into a an actual unit card. Very cool. Um, so you have a leader on the battlefield at all times, and you also have a base. So the reason why Darth Vader, who is a red black card, has a green base is so that um, you can play cards of all three colors. So depending on your play style, or what you want to build around, um, you need to ensure that your leaders and your base um, have all of the card colors that you want because oh my god the art on this is luke upside down and it made me think i was holding the card upside down i've had to flip it over twice uh let me find something so this guy here is a one mana this is your casting cost so you pay one mana one resource to cast this and it's a red black card which means that you need to have red uh, hold on, let me just bring this up. You need to have red and black in your leader and base combo. If you don't have red and black in your leader and base combo, you can still play this card, but you have to pay two extra resources for every icon that you do not match with. So you can play any card in any deck, but you will pay a casting cost penalty if it does not match your leader. Um, see, this one's just got black. The art on some of these is sick. I know people have been... People have been a little um, judgmental on the art so far for this set. Um, and I don't know that I agree. I like this comic book style... Um, so the reason why I am so excited, see Grand Moff Tarkin here has green and black, which is why the Darth Vader starter deck has the green base, because I have all three of those colors to work with, which means I can have green black cards. I can have green red cards. Actually, green red don't exist, I don't think. Uh, green black, green black. Ooh, is Emperor Palpatine? Okay, that art is a little like cart a little too cartoony there's a big difference between like season one clone wars or season one rebels versus season seven clone wars vader's lightsaber so basically as you saw in the play mat there is a few different sections of your board 
and you've got a few different these are tokens you've got a few different um types of units you've got space units which are these ones so they can only play in the space section of your board and actually you know what i might before i no let me just do this so you've got space units in the space section and then you've got um, ground units which can only be deployed in the ground section so you'll have like these guys in the ground section they can only attack other things in the ground section other things in the space section respectively but how you win in star wars unlimited is you knock the your opponent's base down to zero health so most bases have 30 health there are um one there is one base in each color that has 25 health and the reason why you might want to use one of those is because um these bases are the ones that are 30 life have no activated abilities they're just blank but the ones that have 25 health have special abilities what does this say on the back darth vader deck list oh cool it even has the like collector number on it that's pretty neat so this is basically how a game will look from your side of the playing field. Um, you put resources in your resource section upside down like this. Each turn, you can add one more resource to your resource pool. You tap them as necessary in order to cast things or use abilities. There are um, spells that aren't units. And that's what... Um, these guys here are, they're called events. This one is recruit. It's a supply event. So search the top five cards of your deck for a unit, reveal it and draw it. Put the other cards on the bottom of your deck in a random order. Um, there's like force choke, which is really sick. If you control a force unit, this event costs one less to cast. Deal five damage to a non-vehicle unit. That unit's controller draws a card. So if you have say Darth Vader out on the board he there are um, some signifiers some card types under the photo you'll see here that um, Admiral Moti has Imperial and official those are his card types uh, Darth Vader here has force Imperial and Sith um, so as long as you control one of those, uh, force choke, if you control a force unit, this event costs one less to play. Unfortunately, it does not count when he's still in the leader zone. You have to play him in order to get this to count, but there are other um, force units in this deck, I believe. Um, Death Star stormtroopers are imperial troopers imperial troopers imperial officers imperial droids oh maybe there's not is he the only force Ooh, atsts that's cool palpatine oh right there's a palpatine in here force imperial sith official sick okay so we have two force users which is probably why they only gave us one copy of Force Choke. Um, I did get some. Ah. I did get some non-branded sleeves. Um, they do have art sleeves for Star Wars Unlimited. They are really well made they are also by game genic um but i'm not a huge fan of art sleeves i'd much rather have you know single color sleeves black sleeves uh these ones these cortex see-through ones are one of my favorites on the market right now another big difference between um 
Star Wars Unlimited and other TCGs is that you have a 50 card deck and actually, so I probably only could have needed to buy one of these packs. I bought two just assuming that you get the same amount as uh, magic decks because you have to buy two packs of cards if you want to sleeve two decks because magic decks are 60. Um, so you get to you get to build a 50 card deck and there is a sideboard which let me just quickly go to the deck builder on the website. The sideboard. Oh, there's no there's no specified number for the sideboard. Maybe it's in here. Events, upgrades, uh, setup, your leader, regroup phase, traits, card abilities, custom deck building. Oh, okay. There's another interesting thing about Unlimited is that you can only have three copies of a card in your deck rather than four, like a lot of uh, other TCGs. Again, my... Almost my only reference point for TCGs is Magic the Gathering. So if I say something that someone's like, hey, that's in every TCG except for Magic, um, I apologize. That is my only reference point, really. Um, you can have three copies of any card. Your leader and base provide aspect icons. Those are the colored icons. I don't see... They're talking about mana curve. I don't see anything about a sideboard. The deck builder on the website has a sideboard t tab, which made me assume that you could play or have a sideboard, but if it's not in the rule book, I don't, it is a quick start guide. So it is for new players that are playing specifically these decks and not um, a guide for the full game necessarily. we got some cell block guards. This is the color combination. I've been like looking at the cards in the first set um, and trying to see like what... Um, if I wanted to build a deck, what kind of deck might I build? Um, and I think that it would be a riff on this deck with a lot more heavy force users in it. I think I like a lot of the spells and stuff that make use of force users. But then again, I have not... Um, Ooh, Gladiator Star Destroyer. Look at that. Oh, these sleeves are not good for my overhead lights. When played, give a unit Sentinel for this phase. So Sentinel is kind of like Goad. You have to attack something with Sentinel before you can attack anything else. Um, and that's an interesting part about... There's another card type that we didn't really touch on. Uh, these are called upgrades. They're basically like equipment or aura enchantments. Uh, Vader's lightsaber is two resources. It gives you a plus three plus one. And you can attach it to any non-vehicle unit. When played, if attached unit is Darth Vader, you may deal four damage to a ground unit. So obviously you want to attach... Darth Vader's lightsaber to Darth Vader if you get the opportunity. Um, one thing I didn't show off, which I'll do really quickly, is your leader cards all have this epic action on it. So this is the... Um, 
what's the term for it? This is the criteria you have to meet in order to cast your leader as a unit. So for Darth Vader, because he's a big boy, he's a 5'8", your epic action is you if you control seven or more resources, deploy this leader. And you can only do this again one, one time per game um, because it's an epic action and once you expend it, you cannot do it again. Oh, here's a fun card. I am your father. It's a gambit event. Deal seven damage to an enemy unit unless its controller says no. If they do, I get to you get to draw three cards. So either you get seven damage through or you get to draw three cards, uh, which isn't bad. I like that says no is in quotations, like they want you to reenact the whole thing. Uh, there is a free mulligan system in Star Wars Unlimited. I will have to double check, but I believe you don't have to put any cards back. I cannot guarantee that, however. Why do I only have one card left? Did I sleeve something I was not supposed to? I should have two, no? I'm assuming that the base and the leader count towards your 50 cards. Where'd that instruction booklet go? Uh, your deck must include one leader, one base, at least 50 other cards. Oh, okay. So it's 52 cards total. At minimum. So wait, that still doesn't make any sense. These are tokens. So those don't go in the deck. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six, eight, thirty, two, four, six, eight, forty, two, four, six, eight, fifty. Oh. They just had one extra sleeve in that pack, I guess. Driving me nuts. Uh so that's really fun. I'm super excited to try this game. I'm actually excited to witness them come out with more sets apparently there's a new set a second set dropping in june or july and it's going to have uh like kylo ren and ray in it um currently actually let me see if i can bring this up card image card preview uh windows capture browser Let me, so this is the current set. So we've got stuff like Director Krennic, uh, Aiden Verso, Chewbacca, Kirit Imwe, Luke Skywalker, obviously, Emperor Palpatine as a leader card, rather than, um, having him as a unit card like we have in this starter kit. Got Grand Moff Tarkin leader. I think it's really cool because um, when new sets are announced in Magic, a lot of the commander players get really excited to like look through and see which legendary creatures there are on the list because maybe they want to build a new commander deck or maybe they want to see if um, a commander deck they already have is getting going to get an upgrade. Um, whereas because Star Wars Unlimited has a very specific type of um, deck building, I feel like it's going to be very exciting to every time they announce a new set or release a new list, you immediately jump on um, and see who the new leaders are and who, what the new bases do. 
Um, there's some really cool ones. They've got Grand Inquisitor. They're kind of pulling from everywhere, which as a Star Wars fan, I really appreciate. Um, they've got IG-88, uh, who is famously from uh, the Knights of the Old Republic games and appeared in... Um, actually, was he the droid in Knights of the Old Republic? Or am I confusing him with a different droid? He, anyway, he reappeared in um, The Mandalorian, which is really cool. We've got Sabine Wren um, from Rebels. We've got Grand Admiral Thrawn from Everyone's Heart. Um, it's really, really cool. And there are special variants so actually this one doesn't have one let me find let's do thrawn so there's two different variants for special editions of these cards and i did get one pack uh one booster pack to try out so we can open that in a second um but basically you've got the regular version which is this one uh you've got a galaxy version which is basically borderless with the little streaks on it. And then you've got the alt art version, uh, which has a cool different art style. Um, it's pretty neat. I like it. Um, if you're a card collector and you like to open packs, find cool cards and maybe make some money, some of the alt arts on some of the bigger cards are going for hundreds and hundreds of dollars right now. Um, so if you're in uh, your LGS game store and you want to have some fun cracking some cards, maybe you like Star Wars, maybe you're even interested in playing this game, I might suggest picking up a, a pack of Star Wars Unlimited just for the fun and you might make um, some decent money. So one thing I wanted to do, okay, I'm trying to think of what order to do this in. So I've got the Luke deck here. Maybe we should look at that first. I don't know if I should put this in a sleeve yet because I got the deck pod from Game Genix and I know that they have um, special leader slots so they might have sleeves that come in the box um so luke skywalker is a little bit different so because he's blue um the play on this deck is a little different basically it's a lot of shield tokens and shield tokens are something that just absorbs the first hit of damage they take uh, here is the unit side on attack. Give something else a unit. Uh, give another unit a shield token. Basically, blue is sort of like defensive. But I've watched a handful of games played with these two decks going head to head. And Luke, I think, has won every single one of those games. Um, so there's some more tokens, which is great. Uh, we've got R2-D2, Alliance X-Wing, C-3PO. When played slash on attack, choose a number, then look at the top card of your deck. If its cost is the chosen number, you may reveal it and draw it. Wow, okay. But yeah, lots of big booties. Like C-3PO is a 1-4. So he's not going to be doing much killing, um, but he can block you nicely. Uh, Leo Organa, either ready a resource or exhaust a unit when played. We've got some fleet lieutenants. Ooh, a Yoda. Restore two. So you, when this unit attacks, heal two damage from your base, which is pretty cool. When defeated, choose any number of players. They each draw a card. So a little bit of card draw. Liberator Gunship, cool. General Dodona. Oh, Chewbacca. That art is so cool. 
So Chewbacca has Sentinel, which means units in that zone have to attack the Sentinel first. Um, the cool thing about Chewbacca is that every time he gets attacked, he gets readied, so he gets untapped. Uh, ooh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Han Solo. Then we've got Luke's lightsaber, repair, shoot first. Oh, surprise, strike, waylay, and vanquish. Defeat a non-leader unit. Just straight up defeat it. That seems rude. Uh, seems really cool. Seems really cool. So I think I'm going to check out the deck box after this. So that we can potentially put these in a safer space. I'm wondering, um, Kawaii Monster said that someone put their sleeved deck in one of these shitty paper boxes. Let me see if it, oh my God, it actually does fit. I'm like kind of blown away at that doesn't fit nicely look at that whole thing you could even put your leader in there in maybe like a hard sleeve that's pretty crazy well good on them for not just making a waste of cardboard I think that for my only concern right now is that we're at a stage in a brand new card game where the company making said card game doesn't have to do a whole lot to make the barrier of entry easy. There's not a lot of cards. There's not a long history. There's no competitive scene to um have to support right now and so you might find that the price of them aren't super competitive i think that hold on let me check let me check 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 so my lgs is selling booster packs for six dollars which is, um, let me just go to the most recent. Uh, where's the most recent magic set? So like sets from last year are selling for $4.99 for a booster pack. Uh, Brothers War, Theros, Wilds of Eldraine, $4.99. Uh, for just a draft booster. So you might find that like it's an extra dollar. You do get one more card. Um, but even the starter kit, which Wizards of the Coast designed this starter kit. Um, the starter kits, they keep re-releasing them. Um, the starter kits for Magic the Gathering in order to entice new players to play. Right, so they had a strict goal, and with that goal, they knew that the lowest price point they could possibly muster was probably the right play. So, if you walk into a local a game shop today um, and find a magic starter kit on the shelves, I believe they're generally going for like $19 or $25, whereas the Two player starter kit for Star Wars Unlimited is currently listed at $40. So twice the price uh, for essentially the same thing. Two decks that are ready to go. Uh, the bonus for Star Wars is that this is the only place you're going to get these two leaders. They are not in the boosters as far as I'm aware. At least I think that that information was legit. 
Um, the other bonus uh, that Star Wars has going for it is that everyone is starting right now. So having a starter kit that might be a little bit more expensive um, is still going to be palpable and intriguing to most because immediately you've got enough. You buy this one thing, you can go home and play. You don't have to buy a bunch of packs, try to open them up, um, try to build a deck out of whatever you manage to open. You might not even be able to build a, de a good deck uh, from a booster box. All right, so that is Luke Skywalker sleeved up. I do love these Cortex sleeves. I like the Katana ones too. I just find that the Cortex has this like textured back and the textured back keeps them from like sticking together. I don't know if it's just me having like really clammy hands or if other people have this problem a lot too, but I find that if I shuffle a deck for like 10 minutes, whether I just have idle hands or I'm just like waiting around. Um, the next time I go to pick up that deck, some of the cards will be like sort of stuck together just from humidity or clammy ha hands. Um, one thing my LGS looks like they have is like a, a box set. Oh, no, this is a pre-release kit. Okay. I thought maybe they were doing like some sort of bundle situation. Um, but this is a pre-release kit. So one one of the things that um, Fantasy Flight has been focusing on in developing Star Wars Unlimited is the limited play of Star Wars Unlimited. So they designed their booster packs to play well in draft. They designed limited environments like this where you can go open up a pre-release kit build a deck play it have some fun coding go coding dodo thank you so much for the follow i appreciate that um so if you're a fan of drafts if you're a fan of limited card games definitely and if you're a fan of star wars i would suggest checking this out because They've gone out of their way to design their game around the idea that people like limited. Uh, let me see if I've got some just garbage sleeves for these tokens. Uh, that'll work. Six of them. Perfect. I personally um, like draft quite a bit, but I don't know if I'm necessarily going to want to draft a bunch of Star Wars. I honestly don't know how in depth my adoration for this game is going to go in general. I think having a game, but well, my buddy Outbreak there in chat um, loves tabletop games, loves card games in theory. Um, but despises the chance aspect of a lot of TCGs. Totally understandable. Um, however, games like this, where not only is collecting it um, part of the fun, but you don't get mana screwed in a game where you can resource anything. You cannot. As long as you have cards in your hand, you can make mana. Uh, which is pretty integral, honestly. I think it's a reason why people picked up on Lorcana so much. I honestly could not tell you how well Lorcana is doing right now. They have very excitingly put out like three expansions since the launch. Um, but I have not been to um, the card shop during one of the launch parties, so it's hard to tell. I think they're doing fine. I think people are excited about it. Um, but yeah, that's basically... Uh, let me wrap that up uh, before I get into this. 
that's basically what comes in the starter kit. So you've got your two deck, oh, your two decks. You've got Luke, and you've got Darth Vader. You get some tokens to play with. Um, these are double sided. Actually, I should put these in clear sleeves because they're double sided. Um, you get a an instruction manual, which is very handy. Quick reference. Um, Kawhi says, do you think Star Wars Unlimited took any chance at getting Star Wars in Lorcana? Yes, I do. 100%. Um, I think that if Disney is smart, Disney is going to stick to their own IPs for the time being. Doesn't mean they don't do some sort of Magic the Gathering move in the future where they have IPs that aren't created by Disney itself that they eventually branch into, um, like Star Wars um, or some of the other IPs. I think that this game, the success of this game will decide whether Star Wars ever joins Lorcana, but I don't think that the Lorcana devs are interested in including Marvel uh, or anything like that. Yeah, so I think Disney is just going to stick with their catalog, which is a huge catalog. Like it's not to mention like alternate versions and alternate um, realms of their characters. Like you can have 40 different Mickeys because there's been so many different Mickeys. Um, and I think that, you know, that's going to please a lot of people. Whereas this, I think sort of like Lorcana, where Disney has this huge, vast pool, uh, to pull from, I think Star Wars Unlimited has a large pool of characters and archetypes to pull from. I do think that if it is hyper successful, and they start releasing a lot of sets in a calendar year, they might catch up to the current state of Star Wars and they might run out of things to do. Um, but yeah, that's what you get in the starter kit. Uh, these cool, these are supposed to be for play mats, um, but they also have cool posters on the back. So they're not useless, which is great. You love to see it. And yeah, I think this is a really great deal. 40 bucks Canadian uh, to get you in the door, get you two decks that are ready to go. You can learn how to play the game. Uh, you don't have to build something. You don't have to open a bunch of packs and hope that you get cards good enough to play. Um, that's, that's my take. If, if you're watching this video on YouTube later, I appreciate you being here. Um, don't forget to comment below. Tell me what uh, leader in Star Wars you're most excited to build. Tell me what leader that doesn't exist yet that you're most excited to see join the game. And if you're hanging out on Twitch right now, uh, hi, I love you. I hope you're doing great. I'm just going.